Shakespeare's Hamlet, Act 3, Scene 1. This is Prince Hamlet's contemplation. To be or not to be, that is the question. Whether tis nobler in the mind to suffer the slings and arrows of outrageous fortune, or to take arms against a sea of troubles, and by opposing, in them, to die, to sleep, no more. And by asleep, to say we end the heartache and the thousand natural shocks that flesh is heir to. Tis a consummation devoutly to be wished, to die, to sleep, to sleep perchance to dream. Aye, there's the rub. For in that sleep of death, what dreams may come? When we have shuffled off this mortal coil, must give us pause. There is the respect that makes calamity of so long life. For who would bear the whips and scorns of time, the oppressor's wrong, the pangs of despised love, the law's delay, the insolence of office, and the spurns that patient merit of the unworthy takes, when he himself might his quietus make with a bare bodkin. For who would these fardels bear to grunt and sweat under a weary life, but that the dread of something after death, the undiscovered country from whose born no traveler returns, it puzzles the will, makes us rather bear those ills we have than to fly to others that we know not of. Thus conscience does make cowards of us all, and thus the native hue of resolution is sickled over with the pale cast of thought and enterprises of great pith and moment. With this regard, their currents turn awry and lose the name of action. Shakespeare's Hamlet, Act 3, Scene 1. During our military service as veterans, we all had done one thing, we all had one thing in common, the mission. As Shakespeare would call it, the fardels or burdens we bear. Regardless of our job or what branch of service we were assigned, the unit's mission was our purpose in life. When one mission was completed, there was preparation for the next mission. There was no time to question what was experienced, what we did, what we neglected to do, what we should have done or should not have done. That was all pushed aside, pushed aside for the moment. After the military career was completed, we veterans returned home to the civilian world. The civilian jobs became our mission. Some of us, our military experiences that were past and forgotten, began to creep back into our consciousness, haunting us, and just not fitting into the civilian life we now live. A sense of isolation and loneliness crept in, gradually growing stronger. We would find ourselves in a very dark place, Without a light, a way out of that darkness, a veteran continues to fall deeper into an abyss of hopelessness, isolation, sometimes abuse, often addiction, self-loathing. In Shakespeare's Hamlet, there's often quoted a line, to be or not to be, that is the question. This line refers to Hamlet pondering suicide, to be alive or to be dead. Is not to be a better choice than to be? This conflict from within is hidden from the outside world from family, friends, associates, and even other veterans. The darkness can be overwhelming, and sometimes is. Memories are never forgotten. Being able to let that darkness within us escape allows the light of life to replace it. The darkness begins to fade when healing and recovery begin. That light can be found through counseling and finding ways to give back to both civilian and veteran communities. For a few of us, our light has been found through a tribe of fellow veterans, a band of brothers and sisters through Shakespeare. Our light is in the form of bonding with other veterans. Much of Shakespeare reflects a soldier ethos, loyalty, duty, honor, integrity, personal courage, respect, commitment. As veterans, we can relate Shakespeare to our military experiences. Shakespeare provides an avenue to share our emotion and our story without having to actually tell our story. Suicide is a long-term solution to a very short-term problem. In my first 40 years on this earth, I knew of one suicide as a teenager. In the last 10 years of my military career, I have personally known of several suicides, all military. Currently, there are 16 to 22 veterans per day that end their life by way of suicide. Studies have shown that one suicide affects 134 people. 
There were 222 mass shootings from 2009 to 2019. 1,276 people dead, 936 people wounded, compared to 6,000 veterans by suicide annually, <laughs> not in 10 years. As a side note, the stark reality is that veterans are trained to kill other people, either communally or individually, or at least support the taking of human life in some way. Without there being a clear sense of the greater good, like an invading, massacring army, some veterans are left with questioning things that were done as well as those not done. Then there becomes the choice to be or not to be. Thanks. <laughs>